Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Woman defends at suggesting Gillespie likes running down minorities in a truck, Tucker crushes her. The group Latino Victory made a campaign ad for Virginia's Democrat Ralph Northam against Republican Ed Gillespie. In the ad they depict Gillespie as a white supremacist who likes to run down minorities with a pickup truck. Is this what Donald Trump and Ed Gillespie mean by the American dream? The ad asks as it shows neo-Nazis marching in Charlottesville. However, Gillespie himself spoke up against the march in Charlottesville. Tucker Carlson confronted lawyer La Don Jones over the ad. What does that have to do with Ed Gillespie? I mean, look, I'm trying to be reasonable. I'm not sure you're capable of it, but I'm trying to walk through this slowly and ask you how does what happened in Charlottesville relate to Ed Gillespie and why is he he responsible for it? I mean, maybe I'm too literal," said Carlson. No, you're trying to be literal, and you know what? You're trying to be literal, and you're trying to be literal because you don't want to recognize that there are white people in America that can be as bad and worse terrorists as the Muslim terrorists that are here. And you're defending this ad, not because it has anything to do with Ed Gillespie, you could care less about Ed Gillespie. You care about what it depicts. You want to show that the Confederate flag is part of our heritage. I salute one flag that's the American flag, responded Jones, like a complete lunatic. We are done. You are a deeply unreasonable person. I hope you never get near power," responded Carlson. With one tweet, Hannity just left the entire Republican witch hunt in ruins. Sean Hannity has been in the spotlight countless times during the past year. Whether it has been for standing up against the liberal lies in the media or the attacks on him personally by sponsors that pulled their ads from his show but were then forced to reinstate them after the overwhelming backlash against them. But if the liberal media were trying to take down Hannity all they did was fire him up. Sean Hannity just said what every Democrat is afraid to admit. This is the last thing that Democrats want people to realize. Hannity just shined a spotlight on the mass investigation of the Republican Party and the clear ineptitude and lack of investigations of the Democratic Party despite their clear corruption. Hannity is exactly right that conservatives are being targeted for their political views by the mainstream media while the Democrats sit back and enjoy the show and continue to plot. The Democratic Party has shown time and time again that they are corrupt. Just look at Hillary Clinton and the DNC scandals surrounding Tom Perez, Tim Kaine, and Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Where are the special counsels to investigate them? The Democrats just can't accept that they continue to lose. Game over Jeff Sessions calls for crackdown on marijuana legalization. For Jeff Sessions, marijuana is certainly not something to laugh about. The Attorney General is about as anti-pot as humanly possible. In June, he came before Congress, asking his peers to undo the federal medical marijuana protections established by the end of 2014. As of today, those regulations have yet to change. However, Sessions wrote letters to four governors in the past week, stating that he had serious concerns legalizing weed. He later claimed that the drug is only slightly less awful than heroin, a drug that is currently the leading cause of overdose in America. Sessions went on to say that more than half of the medical marijuana grown in the United States is procured in the black market, something that only showcases the integrity of those who work in the legalization business. While 29 states have decriminalized, legalized the drug, Sessions firmly believes that good people don't smoke marijuana. Do you think he is right? What should the Attorney General do next? Let us know.
Al Gore just flipped and admitted something about Trump that no one saw coming. Al Gore just admitted something massive today that nobody is talking about. According to BBC Four's Radio Today, Al Gore admitted on live TV that he thinks that President Trump inherited the North Korea issue. Donald Trump inherited a very dangerous situation that has been building for some time, Gore said. According to the Washington Examiner, Al Gore thinks that Trump should be praised for the way he has handled the tensions between the United States and North Korea. He says President Trump did an amazing job imposing new sanctions on North Korea through the UN Security Council. The sanctions will cut North Korean exports by $1 billion, which is one third of the country's annual exports. This is rich coming from the guy that let the situation get to the point that it is now. Why didn't him and Bill Clinton work harder at disarming North Korea in the 1990s? It came out via Fox News this week that Obama officials tried to squash disclosures that North Korea had the ability to make nuclear weapons small enough to be launched on a ballistic missile. Share this if you think that Trump is doing an amazing job right now and you support him against North Korea. Liberals have been taunting our president. Which side are they on again? They must be on the side of the North Koreans. Stop being so jealous of Fox News Watch Kellyanne Conway pulverize CNN's Brian Stelter CNN's Brian Stelter had Kellyanne Conway on to talk about how Americans don't like President Trump and what she is going to do about it. Kellyanne Conway completely flipped it on him and made him look like a total idiot. Given President Trump's historically low approval ratings, what specific steps are you and your colleagues taking to try to repair Trump's credibility? Asked Stelter. The numbers that matter to America is the 1.5 million jobs created on his watch, the 54 record highs in the stock market closes, the consumer confidence level at a 17-year higher, higher than both George W. Bush and President Obama, responded Kellyanne. You have the voice going through your promo saying CNN, the most trusted name and news. What evidence do you have of that? I've seen polling numbers to the contrary. CNN used to be a place where people can tune in and get the news all day long. Now they get spin and people's opinions. CNN should own it. Why not say, look, it's in our commercial interest at CNN to be anti-Trump. We're profitable if we're against the president, most of our viewers are against the president. Just own it. Don't you think that would be more profitable for CNN? Asked Kellyanne. I understand that you don't want an adversarial media. I guess you just want everybody to be like Fox News, state-run media, responded Stelter which is literally fake news. Fox is not state-run. That's not true. Stop being so jealous of Fox News, Brian, and their ratings. I think that would help if you drop the jealousy a little bit about Fox News. The fact is that we need a media that covers the facts, said Kellyanne. Donna Brazile drops biggest bombshell yet about Seth Rich, Hillary could go to jail for it. Donna Brazile is exposing everything about Hillary and the DNC in her new book. However, the most recent revelation is much larger than just triggering the primary against Bernie Sanders. Seth Rich was murdered in a very mysterious fashion and it was discovered that he may have been a WikiLeaks informant gathering information against Hillary Clinton. Many people thought there was a connection between the two events but this was brushed off by most as a conspiracy theory. Hannity got mocked when he tried talking about it. However, Donna Brazile shows its legitimacy with her new book. Matt Drudge from Drudge Report leaked the information. Brazile writes she was haunted by murder of DNC Seth Rich, and feared for her own life, shutting the blinds so snipers could not see her, writes Drudge on Twitter. This suggests that Brazile either believes, or has inside knowledge that Seth Rich's death was not as innocent and random as the press wants us to believe. Back in May, Hannity agreed to stop reporting on Seth Rich after receiving letters from his family. I totally and completely understand how upset and how hard this is on this family, especially over the recent coverage of Seth's death. 
I've been communicating with them. I got a very heartfelt note. I also sent them a heartfelt note back. However, out of respect for the family's wishes, for now, I am not discussing this matter at this time, said Hannity. California governor goes to Vatican, tells leaders they'd need climate change brainwashing. California Governor Jerry Brown spoke with religious leaders at the Vatican and literally said we need to brainwash leaders about global warming. He started by saying something shocking and unexpected. Global warming is not caused by President Trump. Wow! The Trump factor is very small, very small indeed, said Brown. That's nothing to cheer about, because if it was only Trump that was a problem, we'd have it solved. But that's not our only problem. The problem is us. It's our whole way of life. It's our comfort, it's the greed. It's the indulgence. It's the pattern. And it's the inertia," said Brown. Then it got scary. At the highest circles, people still don't get it. It's not just a light rinse that's required. We need a total, I might say brainwashing," said Brown. We need to wash our brains out and see a very different kind of world," said Brown. What does he mean by that? As we have seen, liberals want full control of the education and mainstream media. They want to control everything we see and hear. Now they are talking about brainwashing. What do you think of Jerry Brown's comments?